happy to have you with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I'm Megan Mozak. I'm joined by financial instructors, Kurt Cassidy and Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. You can find them on Facebook. Just make sure you search for Retirement Education Foundation. And we'll be telling you throughout the show how you can get registered for one of Kirk and Paul's upcoming courses. These are taught at local universities, so stay tuned for that. It's great to be back with Kirk and Paul today. Of course, we talk about retirement planning here on the show. And, you know, there's that saying, you don't know what you don't know, Kirk and Paul. And Paul, maybe we should start with you because of your background in psychology. Why do people sometimes overestimate their knowledge and their abilities? That's a gr- actually a great question. I mean, I, th- I think there's a lot of reasons. I, you know, there's a sort of cognitive bias that people have. I, I-, I think people who have this, – this is a real problem with people who don't have a lot of knowledge in an area. There's a tendency to want to overestimate, and I think part of it is because, you know, we don't like to admit what we don't know, right? We all – we live in a fairly competitive society, right? We live in a society where knowledge is at a premium and, and, and people expect that you should know things. And People don't like to be vulnerable. So, you know, m- many of us just struggle with accepting something that we don't know. And that's fine in certain areas of your life. I mean, if you want to overestimate your abilities or knowledge in areas that aren't that important, well, we don't care much about that. But today we're going to talk about doing that when it comes to financial planning, right? And Kirk, this is where, I mean, massive mistakes happen, right? And we see, this is something that frustrates us a lot, right? We meet people who may be experts in engineering or in medicine have very little knowledge, right, in financial planning, and they t- they 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 make up, they they fool themselves thinking they know more, and it leads to massive mistakes in their retirement. So I was so excited to talk about this, Paul. For those of you who don't know, Paul, who is my brother, I know different last name, but he is my brother. He likes to call himself a recovering psychologist. And we're going to hear a lot of good big words that he may have to explain to me when it comes to some of the psycho stuff. But the psychology and finance is really interesting. And you mentioned, Paul, you said doctors or engineers. And and let's not just pick on that. Even people with backgrounds in finance, even, even CFOs for businesses, lack financial literacy that they need to have as it applies to retirement planning. Right? It's not just investing. If you're well-educated, you do some research, you can have a pretty good understanding of basic investing strategies. You, under, you, can, you can talk to lingo. You may get a little overconfident, uh, which most people do, right? We always think we're better at something than we always are. We're going to talk a little bit about research that's been done around that. And I think many people might relate once we use some examples and some of the numbers. But even those people who have a background in finance have never ever gone through what this next phase of life is going to be, which is how do I take money out of my investments? When do I take money out of my investments? How do I pay taxes in retirement most tax efficiently? Required minimum distributions. How do I pass my money to my surviving spouse? How do I leave my money to my children? Those, I don't care what your background is. If you've never done this, it's going to be new. And just reading a few articles, unfortunately, it's not going to get it done. I know you'll feel confident because you're well read. You think you've you've prepared. Unfortunately, most of the information that is being shared out there today is for the average baby boomer. And most of you who are listening to our shows, most of the people that come to our classes is not the average baby boomer. You need to understand the average baby boomer is going to retire with $200,000. That's it. They're going to have $200,000 saved for retirement. So when you're reading books, learning how, what, when, and why to do things in retirement, they're talking to the majority of the people. You, you who have saved resources that have the resources to be able to live a different lifestyle in retirement, those rules aren't going to apply to you. And this is why we started our class 10 years ago, Paul, almost 10 years ago. This is a seven hour course. This is an advanced class. This isn't for the average retiree. These, this class is for people who have resources that need to figure out how and when and why to take income to be able to make sure they don't outlive their money so that they don't, don't under, underlive their money, which so many do. And I would encourage you to pay, make a $29 donation to charity and attend one of these classes at one of the major universities. You can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call. You know, Kirk, I want to just say something 
that I think is really important here, which is, you know, we this is, we're going to talk about Dunning Kruger, right? We're going to get into the whole Dunning Kruger study. But one of the cool things about the study is they show this graph, and and I I think you know people are going to be able to relate to this. You you mentioned a little knowledge, and here's the problem: a little bit of knowledge is actually a curse, right? A li- what, and 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 the, what this graph shows, the study shows is. At some people get a little bit of knowledge and they think now they're experts, right? They think they're, they're experts. That's when we're most dangerous. And then the more they realize they don't know, at some point, as, as their knowledge increases, at some point they realize they actually don't know much. And at that point, they start realizing they need help. But it's the early but they panic and they panic. But, 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 yep. Let me just say, before then, the problem is early on when you're just exposed to information and you really don't know a lot. That's when you're most dangerous because you now think you have, you, you have a little knowledge and now you think you're an expert. And that's when people make a lot of mistakes. So a little knowledge is actually dangerous. Let's compound that, Paul. But, so a little knowledge. And right now, all the market does is go up, right? It's simple. It's really easy. Everyone's right. making money. So everyone right. thinks they're experts. They got a little knowledge and they're winning. Now, a little knowledge and winning at the same time early. Oh, does that set people up for devastating failure right. and we're not trying to create fear and we just we've done this thousands of times we've taught thousands of people for almost 10 years teaching people how to build for retirement and the amount of overconfidence it, it's it, and it goes back to the study we're going to talk about it later but it's what is it 92 percent of all drivers think they're great drivers <laughs> i mean we, we all know you're not all great drivers we're not all great drivers i'm not a great dri- none of us right so it's wait, this, wait, wait. I'm a great driver. Okay, Paul's clear. a great driver. Right. Thank you. Uh, but this overconfidence and a little bit of success early really sets people up for – because we know if you have a mistake, a bad mistake, market event, you make a bad decision in the first five years of retirement, your chances of outliving your money increase by 75%, Paul. So this is why you've got to invest in your retirement – we have a nonprofit organization that is designed simply to educate people on how and when to take income from which accounts at what age. These courses are seven hours long, 200 page textbook. They're taught at all the major universities. If you'd like to register for one of these courses, you can go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. And we're back with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. We are glad you're with us for the Retirement Education Hour. I want to make sure that you have the contact information. If you want to sign up for one of these courses taught by Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler, the team, you can sign up by going to the website, retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. And keep in mind, these are real downloads. These courses are not just one to two hours. It's a seven-hour course. It's taught over two days or one day, a deep dive at local universities here across the region, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University. And Kirk and Paul, why such long courses? Why isn't this just a, you know, a brief seminar, an hour seminar? Well, here's the thing. This, it really gets to the, the whole topic of this of, of today, right? The problem is, and we know this, you, you do a one or two hour seminar, people now think they have some knowledge, and then they go ahead and make massive decisions about their financial life, right? A little knowledge is actually a curse. A little knowledge is problematic. We know that we actually have to get past that initial curve and really get people the information and education they need so they actually now have some information to make good decisions. So, And people sometimes, you know, Kirk, we hear people complain sometimes, why do I have to sit for eight hours? It's because of this cognitive bias. We know that if we do a one or two hour course, people think now they're experts and they're going to make important decisions on their life when they shouldn't and they're going to make mistakes. We know we have to actually educate. That's why we do an eight hour course. It is. And Paul also, because candidly, part of the course, not that much of it, but part of the course is also trying to get through some of these bias people have created this knowledge they think they have because they've been so financially successful 
right? The baby boomers, the most financially successful generation ever. The greatest transfer of wealth is going to occur from this generation, baby boomers, down to my generation, right? Thank you very much. Ours. Ours. <laughs> Sorry. Aren't you a baby boomer? It's, You're it's, close. I'm, 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 I'm past. I don't think so. You're on the border, I'm right? on the border. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry, bro. Okay. Um, but all this financial success that this generation has had has created an overconfidence. Yes. It's contributed to the mistakes we're going to see. We have a perfect storm, Paul. We have an interest rate, the lowest it's ever been. So low interest rate environments. We've had the longest bull run in history. And we're going to have a lot of people retiring, 10,000 baby boomers a day retiring with just a little bit of knowledge because they think they know how to invest their money. The investment portion of retirement planning is the least important part of the retirement pl plan. It's when do I take income from which one of those investments are the most important plan. And so part of the eight hours is to get past the curve, but it's also to break down some of these conditioned bias that have been just conditioned into the baby boomers for years. Protect your principal, right? 60, 40, 4%, all these silly rules on when you should take social security. These rules don't apply to you because you're not average. If you have more than $200,000 saved for retirement, you're not average. Different strategies, different rules. I think, again, Megan, that's the reason. And it would be a lot easier, trust us, to do a one to two hour course. It would be a lot easier for us. But but it really is, as you, Megan, you say, it's a deep dive and. You know, I don't know if we're going to have time ever to talk about Dunning-Kruger. They, yes. they did some amazing research. But one of the really amazing things is they talk about this thing called the double curse of incompetence. So here's where it really becomes problematic, right? You get a little bit of knowledge, right? You get a little bit of knowledge, and you, th you, you overestimate your abilities. So what happens when you overestimate your abilities? What happens is you think you know enough, so now you actually don't go ahead and, and learn to improve because you think you know a lot. So what happens is people who you know, are competent in other aspects of their life. They've been flirting and playing around with the stock market, think they know a little bit. And because they think they know a little bit, they actually don't get educated because they know something. That's you know, what they call a double curse of incompetence. Now they're making decisions based on information they don't have. And, and you know, as you said, what happens when people make mistakes in retirement? You know, you're, you've retired, you're 65 years old and you retired. You think you're going to go back to work. Hate to tell you this. The chance of you going back to work is pretty small. And if you make a mistake in retirement based on false information, you're not going to go back to work. You're not going to be able to fix it. Here, here's the problem, Paul. So we keep saying, here's the problem. There's so many problems, but, 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 but look, I think a lot of the people we're talking to are smart enough to know that they, they, they know something and they're going to be okay, but they're they're smart enough to know that they really don't know what they need to know, right? But they don't trust anybody yet, and I get it. They don't spend the time to educate, truly educate themselves, like you said. And as a result, more people, we meet more people that are underspending their means than overspending their means. Because most of the people that come to the courses tend to have more resources. So what we find is so many people underspend what they otherwise could be spending because of fear, anxiety, uncertainty. And Paul, you just described was a do-it-yourselfer. I mean, you're describing the super intelligent, very successful, and I'm not picking on any particular uh, profession, but engineer, right? The finance background, the accounting background, these people have done a little research, they, so they know a little bit about investing, so therefore they think they can design a retirement plan. And usually that person has a spouse that has nothing to do with their finances, right? So they don't think about the fact that they could die tomorrow. They could die in 10 years. They could die in 20 years. What is your spouse going to do, right? <laughs> What's their, usually, what are they going to do? And the funny thing is usually that spouse is, is sort of is asking for some help, but they don't want to, sure. but they don't want to, they don't want to hurt the ego of the, of the other spouse who knows a little bit. They don't want to hurt their feelings, right? So they're tiptoeing around the subject, but we know when we actually sit down with those people, they are relieved that actually somebody is convincing, you know, the spouse who, who is a do it yourself, but to finally get some help. More right? often than not, the people yeah. that are attending our courses, Paul, are driven by the a spouse of a do it yourselfer, honestly, right? Because they feel vulnerable. They're getting, you're getting older. What if something happens to my spouse? That spouse says, I have it written down. I showed the spouse where everything is defined. Okay. 
What does that do? When am I taking income? From which accounts? What if there's a long-term care event? What account do I go to? When do I take RMDs? What account strategically should I take my RMDs? There's a right way and a wrong way when you have resources to be taking your income. And that are the details that we're spending in seven to eight hours going through a 200-page textbook at all the major universities, Michigan State, Novi Campus, and uh, Troy Campus, University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Oakland University, and we're teaching in our learning center in Livonia. And we're also streaming it now. We're doing small groups because of COVID and streaming it live so you can stay in the comfort of your own home. All you have to do is make a $29 donation to charity and you can attend this course. If you'd like to register, go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Back with Kirk and Paul right after this. Happy you're with us here for the Retirement Education Hour. Megan Mozak joined by financial instructors Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Be sure to search for them on Facebook. Make sure to like their page and then you'll be in the know for all they're doing to help you gain more confidence about retirement. Speaking of that confidence, Kirk and Paul, you shared a study with me called the Dunning-Kruger study, and it actually says as you gain more knowledge in an area, your confidence tends to go down. Why is that? Tell me more about this study. So uh, Dunning-Kruger did a lot of studies, Kirk, right? There was a lot of studies. But one of the initial studies, I, I find this so fascinating. It's almost embarrassing a little bit. So one of the initial studies, they asked respondents uh, if they knew certain terms, just, you know, terms related to various fields, biology, physics, environment. And what they did is they threw in, in some of these words, made up words to try to trick people. So they they made up words and those made up words were part of other words. And they asked respondents, do they know them? Ninety percent. It's embarrassing. I'm laughing I'm trying to think, what, how would we respond? 90% of the respondents said they knew the meaning of the made-up words. <laughs> I, wanted think, to know the- I, I want you to think about that. They, they, 90% of the people could not admit. That's the bottom line here. They could not admit they did not know something that was completely made up. And, you know, Megan, it goes back to, I think, the first question of the show you asked. Like, why? Like, why would somebody who clearly knows a word is made up try to pretend like they know the meaning? And, and again, we're, je- we're laughing because who cares about that subject? It's not a laughing matter when we talk about finances, right? But, you know, these are people who are smart and competent in areas of their life who just couldn't admit they didn't know something. And, you know, whether it's they don't want to look like they're not knowledgeable or look vulnerable or – or they just believe that because they have expertise in one area, somehow that magically means they have expertise in other areas. There are a lot of reasons. Ego. Ego. There's something in, in psychology called the, the observing ego, your ability to observe yourself. Many of us struggle with this, right? Mm-hmm. The consequence of the study was no big deal, right? Who cares? But then they did other studies, right, related to finance, right? And that really gets at the heart of what we're talking about, right? That really gets to the heart of you want, you want to share about no, this? No, go. You got okay, you, This so, is your background. I love it. I, no, no, I'm enjoying I, listening so, to No, no, it's okay. You're so, in a groove. I could yeah, see you no, love no, it. I do go. love this subject. I, because I love it because it's so important, right? Yes. This is really the harder thing. So another study they did was they asked people some pretty basic questions about finance, right? Questions that if you can't answer, you, I, you say this all the time. I love when you say this, Kirk. If you can't answer these questions, you should not be doing your retirement plan, Right. Basic questions about, about, you know, compounding interest. Like, you know, a question about if you had $100 and you earn 2% interest after X number of years, right, how much would you have, right? I would say that's a pretty basic question, right? A pretty it basic is. question. They asked a variety of these very basic questions. I think we have this out on our, our website right now at retirementplanningedu.org. We have at least some of those questions right. so people can take a financial literacy quiz. So here's the crazy thing. See how you do. Here's the mismatch, right? Yep. So I'm, these are basic questions. About 35% of the people, right? About 35% of the people actually were able to answer these basic questions correctly. 35%. Do you know the percentage that thought they knew the answer? <laughs> Close to 80 <laughs> So I want you to think about that. Think about that, Kirk. Yeah. That means, all, and, 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 and we're laughing, Many of you who are listening to this show 
may not have gotten these answers correctly. That's okay. There's no harm in not knowing something. The harm is 35% had no idea, you know, got it, 35 got it right. Yep. 65% got it wrong. Yep. Yet the majority of the people thought they knew the answer. That's the problem. That's right the there, problem. Paul. The problem is the 80% of people who thought they had it right. That the, the ones that didn't have, they, they weren't insightful enough to know that they didn't know what they don't know. That's right. That's the key. That is it. And so this is so applicable when it comes to finance, especially retirement plan. It's one thing to invest in. And, and I throw this out there all the time. Look, if you can't tell me what percentage of the S&P 500 is healthcare or financial or the tech sector, if you don't know what percentage of it is, are, do you, are you qualified to be stock picking market timing you're not okay let's just be clear you're not but set aside the investing part because that is the easiest part you know our industry's created so much voodoo out of investing if i gave you numbers on what percentage of mutual funds actually fail every 10 years it's 40 percent of all mutual funds fail after 10 years there is not a mutual fund manager has st- stayed in the top one quarter of uh quarter of all the top quartile I've struggled with this before. You, you said it right there. I know. Quartile, yep. They, there's not one manager that stayed in the top quartile over a five-year period ever mm-hmm. in mutual fund, but. right? And they often merge so they can kill their previous performance and start it fresh. And, and these are the most knowledgeable. These are the most theoretically. It's voodoo. Our right. industry is simple. Just buy index funds. You don't. It's simple. It's when it comes to retirement planning. It's different. You are no longer just putting money away and investing it and watching it grow. Now you have to make decisions on when do I take the money out of the accounts, which accounts, how do I do it tax efficiently, and how do I eliminate the number one risk to your retirement plan? Sequence of return risk, which we talk about every show. And it's this overconfidence or not the ability not to be self-reflective or this ego, I'm a, con- I'm a controller, right? Or I'm a... CP, uh, a CPA or I'm an accountant, especially like CPAs, right? Doesn't mean you're not bright and doesn't mean you don't understand numbers and finance. It does, it, you, you likely do. Engineers, the, some of the brightest people we know. I mean, our average client in our private practice has a net worth of over $2 million now, right? I mean, these are very successful. Our largest client worth 55, 60 million. They're very successful people, very bright people. They understand numbers and finance. Right. But they don't know how to take distributions, when, how, why, to protect their spouse, protect themselves, how much they can spend. Are they underspending? Are they overspending? When do I spend? All of these are variables that our industry totally ignores. Totally ignores. They just give you a little bit of knowledge so you're overconfident, and they give you this. Protect your principal so you will self-regulate. In other words, you are all going to underspend what you can spend because you're protecting your principal, meaning you want to die with the same amount of money you started retirement with, which many of you don't. Legacy is not even a priority. So this is why you need to spend seven hours in a classroom or we will stream it to you live. It's a $29 donation to charity. They're taught at all the major universities, a seven-hour class on how to plan for retirement. If you'd like to register, go to Retirement Planning EDU. Dot org retirement planning edu.org or call 800 240 8981. There's much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. This is the Retirement Education Hour. I'm back with Kurt Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. They're financial instructors. And if you'd like to get registered for one of their upcoming courses taught at local universities, including the University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan University, Michigan State University, Novi Campus, and Oakland University, you can get registered at the website. Go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirementplanningedu.org. Or you can call if you'd like to register that way, 800-240-8981. So Kirk and Paul, you've made the case that sometimes it's difficult for people to admit they don't know what they don't know, right? We're human beings and, and that just happens. Why could that potentially impact our retirement planning? So let me just say let me just say one thing. I think it's important, Kirk. We say this, and Megan, we say this is 
is I do think it takes a lot of courage to admit you don't know something for all of us, right? We live in a pretty competitive society where, you know, being smart is really important. But, you know, as we age, Kirk, as we age, it's it, there's a lot of anxiety in aging, right? There's a lot of anxiety in retiring. There's a lot of anxiety in losing control of things, right? And and as we all age, that anxiety increases. And and so, you know, thinking that you know something, thinking you're on, you're an expert at something, thinking that you have an ability when you don't, makes you feel good, right? It makes it it sort of in some ways covers up that anxiety. Admitting that you may not understand something, admitting that you may not be great at something, especially when it comes to your finances, especially if you've been successful financially, is is very anxiety provoking for people. Well, I think that's Paul, and I'll, and I'll throw it back to you in a minute. Yeah, yeah, no, this go. Is, this is your space, and I love listening to you because you're nailing it. It it, it is really challenging when you have been so financially successful your whole life, whether that's in the market and in, in see, I think there's a lot of misinformation in the market. Everyone's making money right now. That doesn't mean you're good. It just might mean you're lucky. We, we have to see how efficient you are. That's a whole different discussion, but in your professions, many of these baby boomers have been super successful. There's really bright and really good. And they do have strong financial, um, understanding. But financial understanding and retirement planning are two different things. And, Paul, I think the disconnect is one is ego. I, I mean, I just think, especially in some of the careers that we're talking about, you you have to be confident. People are going to hire you because of your confidence. You have to believe you know things, right? Mm -hmm. But you've got to think about it this way. I'm telling you, this is the first time you're ever going to plan for retirement. The first time you will ever do this in your entire life. What you do in your careers, you do every day. You've done it hundreds, thousands of times. You're an expert, like a surgeon, right? If you need to brain surgery tomorrow, if you have to have a neurosurgeon do a procedure on you tomorrow, you're not going to the surgeon that's done it just once you're going to go to the person that's done it thousands of times. But yet when it comes to retirement planning, for whatever reason, and I think we know why, but I should say for many reasons, people are just unwilling to say, this is the first time I will ever do this, and I have absolutely no clue where the traps are, the best path, the most efficient path, how to get the most out of what I have. And so because of, we know what it is, anxiety and fear, in a lack of trust, especially when it comes to the financial service industry, they roll the dice. Right. And you, ego. You know, I don't want to pick on, on men, yeah, particular but I men. will in particular. Yes. I, I say this because we see it every day. Sure I do. think I, and it, it, men struggle the most with admitting that you don't know something. And part of that is, right, we're, as, as a man, you're raised. And you're told that you have to be strong and you have to be competent and you have to be, you have to, sorry, but that's the reality you have to take care of. That's, that's how we're all raised, right? Yep. We are raised that we're supposed to be confident, right? So for a man to admit that they, need they don't, help. They, they need help. <laughs> most men don't like to admit this. And at least traditionally, historically, often because of tradition in, in marriages, most of the time it is the man who's doing this. And that's when they're, you know, I, I, where mistakes happen. They don't want to admit they don't know it. So then they make decisions that cause harm in the future. Well, and the piece, Paul, to contribute to this is their relationship with money is different when they're working. It is. You, it, I know many of you, because one of the first questions we'll ask when we're teaching this, this, this eight-hour course, we'll, we'll sit in the class. One of the first things is, were you a disciplined investor in 2008? Did you panic? And baby boomers, even in 2002, right? Baby one, two, whatever we want to call it. Baby boomers wear it like a badge of honor. No, I, I didn't panic. I, I knew it would come back. I held the course. I stayed the course, right? And, and I'm not picking on these people because it's great that you were disciplined and you didn't panic. You didn't discipline. You were disciplined. And you didn't panic because somebody else was paying you a paycheck every single month and you had the time to let it come back. Your relationship with money is different when you are working and someone else is paying for you. When you retire and you have this pile of money and that's all you've got and it's got to serve you the rest of your life, 
Trust me, your relationship's going to be different. So that's another component to this, Paul, is they don't understand the relate the vulnerability they're going to feel. And this is where the underspending comes in, Paul. Constantly, I, it's it's a massive issue. People underestimate the emotions around your money and your spending and your finance. And as a result, we see people deciding on what they're going to spend, what they're going to go on vacation, whether they're going to do home improvements based upon short-term market events, based upon elections. By the way, does this sound familiar to anyone, right? We know 35% of all people over the age of 65 at Fidelity panicked at the bottom with COVID and sold, 35%. I promise you many of those in 2008 did not panic, right? So their relationship with money change, vulnerable panic. And that- Produces and, bad outcomes. I was going to say, and the consequence of that panic, like, it crushes the retirement. Right, right. Because what happened after the market crashed? It rallied, and they never came back from the thirty-five percent right. that they thirty. So 30, this is the mistakes we're talking about. When yes, we, I mean, when when we talk about mistakes of being overconfident, you want to be overconfident aspects of your life. That's fine, but this is not the area you can afford to make a mistake. It's just not, and so it's why we don't just teach a one-hour course, right? We really want you to be you know, engulfed in this. We want to teach you a lot so that you actually have some knowledge. It's why we teach our course. It's a seven, eight hour course. You have to donate $29 to charity to attend. You can come a person. We are now doing them a person, five, six people class, small groups, small groups. We're also streaming it live, right? At our, at our learning center, as well as local universities. If you want to attend, go to retirementplanningedu.org. That's retirement planning edu.org or you can call 1-800-240-8981 that number again is 1-800-240-8981 and there is much more of the retirement education hour straight ahead Glad to be here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler of the Retirement Education Foundation. Kirk and Paul are financial instructors. They teach courses on retirement planning right here in our community at several local universities. These are two-day courses or a one-day, seven-hour course, deep dive into retirement planning. All you need to know, you can get registered for these courses by signing up at the website retirementplanningedu.org or you can call 800-240-8981. And don't forget to like the Retirement Education Foundation on Facebook. So Kirk and Paul, let's talk about overconfidence. We've touched on this a bit over uh, the course of the show today, but, but what are some problems that overconfidence could potentially cause? Megan, it causes a lot of mistakes that, uh, you know, so you, you got to appreciate I should, we should clarify, this course is not a basic financial literacy course. This is advanced planning for people who have resources. When, how, why. Maybe next segment we'll talk about a little bit more about the, the class and what the process is like. But the mistakes are caused by A, overconfidence. Thinking we have a greater ability in an area that you've never done in your whole life and you just could read a few articles and you... And because you've invested well and your career has been good, now you've got it nailed. And, and the mistakes are huge. The, the consequences are huge. For many, it will be outliving their money. For more, in our opinion, that we see, the, those who have resources, it's way underspending what they otherwise could be spending. In other words, allowing short-term market events, elections. See, here's the thing. In retirement, Every four to seven years, there's something major that's going to happen that's going to cause a lot of anxiety and it impacts your money and your investments, period. That's going to happen. So to not think that's going to happen is burying your head in the sand and not being prepared. How do I pivot? Where do I take my money from when we're in a recession? Because that's the key. The key isn't the investment. It's the key is when do I take the income from the investment that is going to cause the problem, right? If I take it from the wrong account, Paul, the chances of outliving my money increase by 75%. And then if I see my accounts go down, Paul, a little bit a year, if we have a COVID event, oh, I don't retire this year. I was planning to retire, but I can't retire or I can't go on vacation or I don't like that Biden's elected or I don't like that Trump was elected or being impeached, whatever it is. How about when you take Social Security? 
looking at it in isolation, not recognizing the taxation on Social Security impacts the taxation on your capital gains, taxation on your IRS. It impacts all of your other money. And if you're not holistically planning strategically when I'm taking the money, then you really don't know. The calculator doesn't tell you when to take Social Security, how it impacts all your other dollars. It only tells you based upon Social Security itself. I have one more. Yeah, give me. There's tons. Right, there's tons. So I, I met someone recently who makes a quarter million dollars every year as an engineer. He's been making that for about 20 years. Has about $200,000 in, in, in his 401k. Because, what? Yes, it's a true story. Yes, because what happened was in 2007, 2008, panicked, got out of the market. Oh, right, gosh. got out of the market. Wow. Saying, thought, thought he made it. He thought he made he was proud. He thought he made the right decision. Yeah, he, thought he timed he t- it. He timed it right. Good. He got right? one side of it. He got one side of it, and he's never been able to get back in because he has no idea how to get back in. Now he wants to retire within a year with with two hundred thousand dollars in his four hundred one k. Obviously, no. It's not going to happen. So that's the other thing. You don't time the markets. Or how much? What percentage can you take out of your investments? Now, if you go the conventional wisdom right now, the rule is three percent. It used to be 4%. The new rule is 3%. Or they're going to tell you, you if you want to take 4%, then you have to take a greater position in more equities. Take 75 equities, 25 bonds, which is insane, which I promise you you're going to panic when you're 72 years old and you see your portfolio go down 43% because that's what a 75-25 portfolio's max drawdown would, would occur in a 2008 event. What order do I take money? Do I defer taking money out of my IRAs until last, until I'm forced to on RMDs. For most people that have wealth, have resources, that is the opposite of what you should be doing. You should be Roth converting and strategically managing your brackets to pay less taxes. The less taxes I have, the less I have to take out of my accounts to give me the money I want to live on. Therefore, my money lasts longer. How do I protect my surviving spouse? People don't know this, Paul, but the surviving spouse will end up with similar income and significantly more taxes because they go from married filing joint to single. This is avoidable. If you just plan ahead and know where money is going to come from when, potentially disclaim some of the IRS. There are so many strategies that most people, the majority of people have no clue because they're focused on what mutual fund, what stock to buy. That's irrelevant in retirement. That's the easiest. It's like number four on the list of one through 10 of importance. I have one more. Yep. There's tons. Go. I met someone a couple months ago, right, at at the 10% tax bracket, right, and could be Roth converting, you know, significant amounts of money every year so that by the time they're required to take distributions on their IRAs, they'd be at the 0% tax bracket. And they're not doing any Roth conversions at all because they were told in their mind you never take any of that IRA out of those IRAs until you have to. It's the wrong thing for people with resources. Paul, there's so many, many underestimating what you otherwise can have. There's so many about income planning. Which but all, here's the thing. All of these, all of these, to go, bring it back to the topic, all of these were from people who just could not admit they're really smart people. They're, these are we're not talking about we're talking no, about smart people. People who come to our class are the engineers, That's the right. physicians, but they the CPAs. just couldn't admit that they needed help, right? Uh, it is okay you guys to admit you don't know something. It doesn't mean you're not smart. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It's not embarrassing. In fact, I would argue really it takes intelligence to admit you don't know something. Now you got to know where to get that information. Well, that's the challenge, Paul. So our industry has not promoted any warm and fuzzy feelings for people because they're all just promoting these general rules that they can do themselves, literally. And that's why before you make a decision on what to do or who to have help you, spend seven, eight hours to see what a plan looks like. How do you choose an advisor? How do you do a background check on it? Come educate yourself. Give yourself the gift of 29, education. $29, you guys. It's a donation. Right. Right? It's seven hours in a university setting, or you can stream it live, We're teaching at all the major universities. Go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800-240-8981. Before you make decisions about retirement, on hiring somebody or doing it yourself, invest 
to understand where the traps are and the myths and misconceptions. We're back with much more with Kirk and Paul straight ahead. Always a pleasure to be here with Kirk Cassidy, Dr. Paul Mettler. Find them on Facebook. Just search Retirement Education Foundation. We hope you'll get registered for one of their upcoming courses taught at local universities. Go online to register. So easy. Go to retirementplanningedu. Dot O-R-G. That's retirementplanningedu.org, or you can call 800-240-8981. Let's talk about planning. We've, we've discussed confidence. We've discussed the fact that sometimes being overconfident can cause some missteps. What can planning do to solve some of this? Well, it gives them some, it, it, again, the relationship with money is going to change in retirement. So if you have a plan, a comprehensive plan, you got to understand the plans that we teach in the courses, they take us 30 to 50 hours to construct. They t- there's no software. You have to literally run iteration after iteration trying to find the best sequences of taking money at the right accounts at the right times to manage the brackets. And if you do it right, if you really have a written out plan, a 30, 40 year out written out plan with tax projections for 30 to 40 years with a summary of the spreadsheet telling you each account what you're doing and when you're doing it it's going to give you peace of mind no matter how sophisticated and talented you are as you get older cognitively things are going to change and you might not have a a a significant diminishment but connecting the dots are going to get more and more difficult and having the ability to watch it see it know what you're going to do when you're going to do it for 30 to 40 years give and and also shows you where to pivot to when we're in a recession or there's a market event where you're taking your money from what's guaranteed what's not i think i don't think i know it provides people a confidence that otherwise if you don't have the plan you will not have and therefore you have more freedom to do the things you want to do in retirement and confidence i'm telling you paul i'm seeing it constantly right more and more people underestimating what they can have. They are so underspending their means. They're working so many more years than they actually need to when they have the resources. And I keep telling people, you're not working for yourself at this point. You're working for your children. If you don't spend this money, you're just leaving more money to your children. If that's a priority, great. But if it's not, then fear is driving you to work. Fear is driving you to underspend. If you have that fear, you need a plan. And if you understand it, you will then be of that freedom. You know, there's a saying that we love to, to throw out, and I think it's it's totally fitting for this show, which is, we say it all the time, knowledge is power, right? Now, sometimes the power in that knowledge is actually learning what you need to do so that you can build your retirement plan and live the life you want. Sometimes, though, what we find, that power is knowing that you don't know a lot. And I hate to say this, that's worth a lot, Okay. Realizing, I mean, and and we meet people who sit with us after the class and say, oh my God, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. Oh my God. I can't believe how much is out there that I had no idea about. Now that's, there's value in realizing that you may not have all the information because then you can find a way to get that information. So you don't make mistakes. So when I, we say knowledge is power, it's not just the power to do it, to, to, to make the right decisions and build your own plan, sometimes it's the power of knowing that you, you may not ever be an expert in this, but now you need you know what to look for when you want to find someone to help you. I think that is so critical, Paul. I know that's the last part of our class. We spend the last, I don't know, 45 minutes of the class. How do you choose an advisor? How do you do background checks? How do they get paid? What is a fiduciary? What should you be looking for? How do you read between the lines? We show examples of what a plan looks like because everyone's going to say they do planning and they give you some software generated Monte Carlo simulation with a probability dial that tells you to take 4%. That isn't a plan folks. That, that doesn't, that doesn't do anything for you. Protecting your principal. I know you've been trained to protect your principal. The question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to die with the same amount of money you have when you retire? So if you retire with $2 million, do you want to leave $2 million to your heirs, your kids, your loved ones? If the answer is no, then a controlled spend down of your principal is just fine. But you have to have a plan that you understand. That's why, that's why the class is seven, eight hours, Paul, is you have to. It's not good enough just to find somebody to help you. 
you got to find someone that'll help you if you're good. If you want help, you got to find somebody that'll help you. But you have to have the knowledge and understanding to know what they're doing. Without that knowledge and understanding of what they're doing, you're vulnerable. You you won't have the freedom. You right. still won't spend. You still won't do the things you otherwise would want to do. And that is, th- there's a reason why seventy six. What is the number? Seventy six trillion. That's passing from the. Is it trillion? What are we talking about? There's a about? billion from baby boomers to the next generation. Billion. You think it's trillion? It's I, a it's I, a ridiculous I, sum of money. Both are ridiculous. I really. Will you look that up? I will. I will. I, I know. Whatever it is, part of that reason is because of fear, not because everyone wants to leave that much money. It's because they don't know how much they can spend. They don't know the right path. So while they think they're really they're confident and they're really smart, but they're not confident enough to retire when they have plenty of money. It's kind of like this. If you've already won the marathon, what are you doing? And we use that analogy a lot, right? It's something Warren Buffett once said. You have to be insane to risk something you have for something you don't need. In other words, if you have what you need, what are you doing? What are you taking risks for? Why are you working? Do you know your trillion? Trillion. I told you. I, it's yeah, a crazy it number. Yeah. Trillion. $76 trillion is going to pass. Not all because people want to leave a ton of wealth and legacy. For a lot of people, it's because they don't know what they have and what it can do. Because of fear and anxiety. Your relationship it's going to change. And the best way to be able to have freedom in, re- in retirement is to take control of that fear and anxiety by educating yourself. And it's why almost 10 years ago, we started this nonprofit organization to teach these eight-hour courses at all the major universities, at University of Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Michigan State University, the Novi Campus, and Troy Campus, Oakland University, and since COVID, we are streaming them live and we're doing small groups. So... $29 donation to charity gets you eight hours of education. Register. Give your gift of education this holiday season. Go to retirementplanningedu.org, retirementplanningedu.org, or call 800 240 8981. Investing involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Any references to protection, safety, or lifetime income generally refer to fixed insurance products, never securities or investments. Insurance guarantees are backed by the financial strength and claims-paying abilities of the issuing carrier. This radio show is intended for informational purposes only. It is not intended to be used as the sole basis for financial decisions, nor should it be construed as advice designed to meet the particular needs of an individual situation. Retirement Education Foundation is not permitted to offer, and no statement made during the show shall constitute tax or legal advice. Our firm is not affiliated with or endorsed by the U.S. government or any governmental agency. The information and opinions contained herein provided by third parties have been obtained from sources believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed by Retirement Education Foundation. This radio show is a paid placement.